In this week's video tip, we are going to briefly review and point out five features in Song Surgeon that are often overlooked by users. Hi everyone, this is Jim Todd with Song Surgeon, and today in this video tip we're going to look at features found in both Standard and Pro, Mac and Windows. So let's go ahead and get started. The first feature we're going to look at is called Export Duplicate Count. And using the Export Duplicate Count setting, you can specify the number of copies you want to create on export. An example use for this would be to isolate a segment of audio that you want to learn using loops. Let's say, for example, this area over here, loop 1, is something that we'd like to learn. And let's further say that we want to slow it down to 40%, which you can see that I've done. And now we want to export this, but instead of making one copy, when it plays back at 40%, we want to make five copies of this and have those copies put back to back. So it's almost as if it's looping, even though all you've done is created a new file that you can play not only in Song Surgeon, but in any audio player, and it will play back five times. So how do we do that? We go to Export. And regardless of whether we select Current Loop, All Loops, or Entire Song, we have this same option, but we're doing Current Loop, and then down here we simply change this number. By default it's set to 1, meaning that if we export it, it's going to make one copy. If we change that to 5 and give it a name and go ahead and click Save, it will now make 5 copies of this at 40% and you'll create a new file with those number of copies embedded in it. So that's the first of the items that we're going to look at. The second set of items are customization options that you find in the Options button. So if we open it up, let's take a look at what's in here. The first of these that I'd like to point out are the custom tempo presets. So, for example, minor set to 20, 30, 50, 75, and 90. But if you routinely use, let's say, 95%, and you'd like a button at 95%, so you don't have to use these buttons and constantly go up and down to get there, you simply overwrite this and change it to 95, or any other of these buttons that you'd like to change. So this allows you to customize these preset buttons that appear here on your screen. A second item is the Auto Play When Opening Files feature. This is the feature that starts the audio file playing as soon as you select it. So it's a great way in which you can click on a file and if you're not certain whether or not it's the file you'd like to use, you can hear it begin to play immediately and you can therefore immediately determine whether or not that is the right file the file that you're looking for and want to open or whether it's not. Lastly here in this window you will see the ability to select the algorithm that you're using. There's one for performance and one for transcribing and you can choose either one of these by default. Let's move on then to a third item which is known as a loop bypass. This is a feature found in version 4. Again, standard or pro, Mac or Windows, it doesn't matter and it's new to version 4 and essentially all it does is it turns these loops off so if you're practicing a loop and you decide that you want to play the whole file or the whole song through without the loop you can simply click this loop bypass button turn the loops off you'll see that the shading disappears even though the loop beginning and ending points still stay on your screen and that just is a way to tell you visually that they've been turned off so that's a very useful feature found in version 4 that if you've not been using you might want to avail yourself of that. Another feature having to do with loops is the customization features which you can find by selecting the edit button right here and when you do that you'll open up this loop edit box and you can change a whole lot of things in here. You can change the label, you can change the positioning, you can change the pitch of the tempo, uh, and we have Speed Trainer in here, and uh, we've talked a lot about Speed Trainer, so I'm not going to go into it. But the one I wanted to focus on, or the ones I wanted to focus on, are these playback parameters right here, being the loop count and the delay. Both of these um, are very useful tools that if you're not using, you should consider. The first is the loop count. Minus one simply means it loops infinitely. And if you'd like to change that to a specified number, you can put in 5 or 10 or 50, and it will loop that many times, the number that you specify. A second item you can change is the delay. That is to say that at the end of the loop, when it hits this ending loop point here, if you want it to delay 2 seconds or 5 seconds or 50 seconds, you can simply type that number in, click OK, and once you've saved that setting, then what happens is when you reach the end of the looping 
area that you've created on the screen, it will pause that number of seconds. So what this delay does is give you a few seconds to regroup your thoughts or your fingers prior to the looping starting to play again. The fifth and last feature then that I want to talk about is a new feature, again, found in version 4. It's a font size feature, both for the looping areas as well as for the markers that you see up here at the top of the screen. If you right click over either one of these and go to font size, you'll see that you can now select 8, 10, 12, 14, or 16. So if we go to 16, you can see that the font size gets much larger. For those of you who are young, this may not be a big deal, but as you get older, your eyes will appreciate the ability to make these font sizes larger. And with that, we'll conclude this weekly video tip. Thanks for watching.